Page 12, Playing on the Grand Staff. Now the pages prior to this book are explaining the symbols, the musical symbols, the music notation, how to read, and how the piano, keyboard is laid out and all that junk. Because you're just going to have a ball reading it, you go for it. I'm not really here to teach you to read music, although I'm going to cover it all eventually. So just briefly, let's kind of cover real quick the stuff this book is trying to present to you. I mean, you can read the stuff as well as I can, I'm sure. Let's start out explaining the fingers are numbered. We love numbers. There's lots of numbers in music. You're just going to love it. But they're, they're numbered. They're, the thumb is one and the little finger is five and you can calculate the rest of them. And they're the same on both. So if I say take the first finger, we're talking about the thumb, not the index finger, the thumb. In piano we got five fingers. In some other instruments like a violin or so, they only use four fingers. So the numbering is different. And they talk about the layout of the keyboard. Well, look at the keyboard. It's, it's all nicely laid out. And with a lot of examples in music, we like to refer to a keyboard because everything is so neatly laid out. But if you look at the black keys, you'll see they're groups, twos and threes. So there's five of these puppies. And the pattern just repeats itself over and over and over and over. Well, that's handy because with 88 keys on a standard piano, I don't want to go through and have to memorize 88 different notes. Forget that. You only have to memorize seven. First seven letters of the alphabet. How easy is that? So if I start on an A, it just goes up the alphabet to G. I left out an E. And the idea is you memorize the names of the keys on the keyboard in and you locate them, identify them, in relation to the black key layouts. Because all the white keys look pretty much the same. If you covered up the black keys, the white keys would well, yeah. So we look at the patterns of the black keys. And an A is in the middle, the upper middle, of a group of three black keys. See, these two keys are in the middle, and it's the upper middle of the group of three. So on a keyboard, all of these are A's. And this is wonderful, they're all A's. It just keeps repeating itself. And I don't know of an easy way to memorize this stuff. You simply have to take the time to learn them. You will learn them eventually because you're going to use them so much. And I talk about them in the videos so much. So, you just, each of them, you're just memorizing the notes in relation to where, where it is to the black keys. Then, in addition to that, they also talk about, we got two hands, we got to deal with two hands. Okay, we can handle that. But you need to know the names of the keys in the written music. Because, if you look on the grand staff, the very first note there is here. They have a one above it. That's... A C. That particular note in the written music is middle C. It's not middle C because it's in the middle of the keyboard. It's not in the middle. It's close, but not in the middle. It's middle C because it's in the middle of the grand staff. We'll get to more of that a little bit later. But there's a lot of C's on the keyboard. They're all over the place. And a C is at the bottom of a group of two black keys. So just memorize that. Bottom of a group of two black keys is a C. Okay, got it. Good. All the C C's on the keyboard are fine, but only one of them is going to match that C in the written music. So that C is this middle C here. No other C. It's got to be that one. So when you see a note in that location, it's got one of those little lines underneath the staff, the treble clef. That's the sign at the beginning. That's that curly thingy bit jigger at the beginning of the staff. That's a treble clef. And when you see that in the staff and the note given is that little line underneath that staff, that is middle C. And that is this key on the piano. Everything kind of correlates. If I know that C, where that is, I can calculate all the others. Because look at the first measure of the grand staff. Each note goes up, and as it does it, it's going to go up the keyboard, all the way up. And the second measure there, a measure is the space between those vertical lines, 
and those lines are called measure lines or bar lines and in between is a measure or a bar. So in the second measure the notes are given in the next to the bottom line and that is a G. Well on piano a G is the lower middle of a group of three black keys here and there's a lot of G's. They're all over the place. G's went crazy but there's only one G on the keyboard that matches that note in the written music and that is the G above middle C because middle C is here and we go up to G here. So when I see that note in the music I play this key on the piano. Pretty straightforward. Gradually putting the pieces together. So you can figure out all the others and I'm not going to cover them all. You can you got D, E, F, G. Okay I covered them all. I can, well, then the one above the first note is the finger number. Remember one is, a, is the thumb? So if I put my thumb on that one and I put all the other fingers next to it, I'm in a hand position called a C position. It's a five finger position and it, it's because the bottom note's C. And that is where my hand needs to be to play this piece. They give you a chart at the top. I don't like those charts. I like to look at the music and teach you how to figure it out looking at the music because the charts are only temporary. Then in the left hand, that's the bottom line and it's on the bottom staff and it's got that bass clef. Is that little curved thingy with the two dots? Call it bass clef. And the first note there you see is the next to the bottom space. And that is a C below middle C. So middle C is here. I gotta go all the way down to the next group of black here, and that is this C. So when I see that note in the staff, I'm going to play this note on the key on the keyboard. And you can figure out all the others from that. Well, there's a five underneath that note, and that's fifth finger. Well, if this is one, that's five because the num the number. Yep. Yeah. So I put my fifth finger on that note, and the other fingers on the keys next to it, and I'm in this hand position. It's another five finger position. Five fingers, five notes, and they're all next to each other. And the bottom key on it is a C, so it's a C position. There's a lot of C positions on the piano. So it's like here and here and here and here and here and all over the place. C position. So what they're telling you in their own wonderful way is your hands are in C position, both of them, to play this first piece. Well, slowly getting there. Now, in addition to all of that, we know what notes to play, we know which fingers to use, we need to know how long to hold the notes down because it could be a long time or it could be a little time whatever we need to know how long look at the numbers 4-4 four, four. that's going to give us our first clue it's not the whole picture it's just the first clue the top number tells you how far you have to count Ugh. Got to count to four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The bottom number tells you what you're counting because if you're going to count something, it helps to know what you're going to count. And the four rep stands for quarter note, one fourth or a quarter. You, you can do the logic behind that. I ain't getting into it. It's just remember the bottom number refers to the note that you're counting and a four refers to quarter note. We're counting quarter notes. So there should be the same as four quarter notes in every measure. Remember the measure is the space between the vertical line? Mm -hmm. the, the same as four quarter notes. Well look at the first measure here in the top line. You have four quarter notes. Now it's kind of hard to tell in this book because Alfred puts the name of the note, the letter name, inside the note. Shouldn't do that. I don't agree with that, but they did it. So here we'll have to deal with it. Because it should be a solid note. If you look back 
way back into the book and you see quarter notes, they're a solid black note, and that's what they look like. Third, they're helping you out by putting the names of the notes in here to help you have time to learn them, and the sooner you learn them, the better. So there's four of these quarter notes in the first measure. Makes sense. Look at the second measure. We have two quarter notes and a half note. The, the circle with the stem is a half note. A half note is the same as two quarter notes. So in here, you're counting quarter notes. The second measure, you have the same as four quarter notes. It's two quarter notes and a half note. It equals four quarter notes. And they all work the same way. Everywhere. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, one. And on each count is a quarter note. Doesn't tell us how fast to count. They don't say how fast to count. So it's up to you how fast you count. Because how fast you count determines how fast you play. If I go one, two, three, four, I'm going to go in the right at the beginning, my hand here, I'm going to play each of these notes. One, that speed, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I've got to hold the half note down for two counts because it's a half note and it gets two, right? That's telling me sort of how fast to go. I'm sort of putting the pieces together. I could count faster if I go one, two, three, four, and I'll play a quarter note on each of those. Obviously, I'm going to go faster. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Old people don't like to do that. We, we go slow. One, two, three. The kicker is the beat's got to be even. Well, let me introduce you to my little friend called a metronome. It's this thing I have sitting here on the piano. There are all kinds of metronomes around. And if you don't have one, do the best you can. But I highly recommend them. This one has little lights going up and down for the beats. It's an old metronome. You can't buy it anymore, as far as I know. It's out of print. And I don't know if there's new ones with the little lights that go up and down. I'm waiting for this one to go kaput, and then I'll go see if I can find another one. But it's good for illustrative purposes in these videos. And it can go in various speeds. A lot of metronomes have clickers where you can hear the beat. And that's actually better than the lights, because you don't want to have to be looking at the lights going up and following that and everything else you got to do. Shut up. So it's easier to hear the clicks. And there's all kinds of metronomes. I got a little metronome here I use for various things. I, I got other metronomes. I got metronomes. You can get apps on your phone for metronomes, and I have a couple of those. They come in handy. So how fast the metronome goes is how fast the beat goes, how fast the count goes, how fast you're going to play. Now we know what notes to play. And we know how long to hold each note down, and now we know how, how fast to play, or when to play the notes. If we put it all together, and don't go crazy, it should work. So, at just the first couple measures of the first line, I've already done them, but just to make sure you're clear, the right hand is here, and I just, I'm going to play them. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now I'm only counting when I first start a song, when I'm first learning it. Once I know the song, and I know the rhythm, the patterns of long, short notes, or whatever they are, I don't count anymore, because I have it in, in, I can feel it. I don't need to count it, I can feel this. If you can, if you can feel a regular beat, you can, you can get it. You just count at the beginning. Well, that's the, the first line, and then in the second line, the left hand gets notes here, and it's the first couple measures of the bottom, the second line there. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And when you're first starting out, I suggest you put both hands on the keyboard and you leave them there for the whole piece, whether they're going to be used or not. See, the first line, only the right hand is used. We'll put the left hand there and leave it there just so it's ready to go. Just moving hands around and doing this while you're playing adds another level of complexity to it, and we'll get there later. Right now, put them both there and leave them there. And when you get to the second line with just left hand, leave the right hand up there. Because you're going to need it again, believe it or not. Because if you look at the end of the second line, 
you see a thin and thick measure line or bar line. We call them bar lines or measure And there's two dots. Well, that's called a repeat sign. A thin and thick bar line with two dots is called a repeat sign. And it simply means go back to the beginning and do it all again. Repeat it. So when we play this together, and we will someday, you're going to repeat back up, and then the right hand's going to play again. And then the left hand's going to play again. But I still say leave both hands on the keyboard for the whole piece. I'm going to keep saying that throughout this. They have some things on page 12, which is clap and count and play and count and all that. You know, knock yourself out if you want. But I tend to count out loud while we do what this part of the video I call a play with me section. And that is where I play the piece really slowly and I encourage you to play along with me at the same time so you can hear my note, you can hear your note, and you can tell hopefully that whether you're playing the same note I am or not at the same time I'm playing. So you can check your notes and your rhythms with me. Then once you have all that and you're pretty sure of yourself, then you can go ahead and speed it up on your own. I don't perform these very often. I'm not here to perform for you. There's different teachers with different approaches and my approach is I'm going to teach here. I am not going to sit here and show off for you. I have another channel. You can go look at that. I think there's a link to it. I don't remember. And there's a playlist in that channel with a bunch of piano solos that I've uploaded so far. And you can go listen to those, and you can listen to me show off on those if you want. But in this channel, strictly for teaching. Rarely will a piece come along where I think, maybe I better perform this for you to give you a better idea of what it sounds like. And in that case, I might do that. Now there are more symbols here that I'm not explaining yet. But as we go through the book, I will cover them all. Because it's important that you understand what every symbol means, every little instruction. They're all there for something. Yeah. Having said all that, let's go ahead and do the play with me section. So you're going to put your hands in C position here, both of them. You don't have to push the notes down. I like to do that because I like to make noise. So you're ready to go. And then I'm going to count four beats to get us going. I'm going to go one, two, ready, go. And then we play it together. Now we are going to play it twice because it's repeated. Now, so let's try this out and see what happens. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 